you guys are putting out all your albums, right? And Three Six Mafia is doing well. And then Jermaine Dupri was the first one to actually sample you guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, what year was this? Man, this was like in um, 97, maybe. Okay. He made a, um, a tape, I think it was called like uh, Bass Something. It was like these, uh, these Bass. So, so So Deaf Bass All Stars? Yeah, So So Deaf uh, Bass All Stars. And he called us, and uh, uh, Lil John used to work for him back in the day. Mm-hmm. And uh, he called us to clear a sample. I didn't even know. I was like, what? I was like, um, you know, I had never did that before. I didn't even know what to do, really. I was like, <laughs> all right, uh, I guess. I mean, how much money are you going to give us? <laughs> and, uh, he was the first person to clear a sample from us. It was so weird. A long time ago. Now, now I clear samples like three, four times a week. Right. And, and you guys really didn't sample much yourselves, right? Not a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit here and there, but mostly yeah. it was original compositions, so you yeah. don't have to kick back the sample. Yeah. I, I remember one of the one of the coldest interviews I did about that was when I interviewed Peter Guns. When you did uh, Deja Vu, I, I had heard that there was a clearance issue around it. You guys didn't clear the sample before putting it out? So we just did a song off of our Steely Dan sample and threw it out. You know, the verses is 20-something bars, the hook is 16 bars. It's about New York and the Bronx. We didn't think nothing of it. The records start growing legs, so labels start reaching out. So when we go to clear the sample, they just want all the publishing and $115,000 in cash. So we had to give them all the publishing and pay them $115,000 in cash, which if you got close to a million dollars, you're thinking that's nothing. And they can have the publishing too because we'll just make another hit and that'll be our money. And you know, that just never happened. They would not even give us writing credit. So when you look at the publishing information and all the information on the record or the CD, it's written by Donald Fagan and Walter Becker, two old white men. They not from the streets, they not from the hood, they not from the Bronx, they not from Brooklyn, Queens, and none of the boroughs. But it was written by them. So Donald Fagan wrote, I'm quick to slide off and slide this dick up in your wife. Yeah, and they lost it, so they literally made no money off that song Man, at all. This is what happens when you don't clear samples, kids. Yeah. Don't fuck around. You never know when, when you're going to drop that hit uh-huh. and someone's going to take all your shit. Uh-huh. So, so you, that was the beginning of, of you guys getting sampled. And now you're saying, what, three times a week? Yeah, yeah, like three times a week, man. They're going crazy with it. I love it. It's a blessing, though. <laughs> Right, I guess your lawyer uh, had to hire assistants, had a paralegals just to yeah, keep up with. Yeah, he had to hire an extra couple of paralegals just to help us because they, they come through so so fast and like like um, they putting them out fast. Like um, the one, uh, the Bickenheads, Bickenheads, right? Well, um, Cardi B's joint. Like when I cleared that, I swear it probably came out two days later. <laughs> it was fast. It was so funny. My boy, I cleared it. And then um, I said, my boy had sent me a picture of it. He was like, it's out. I was like, where did you get that from? He's like, no, it's out everywhere. I'm like, for real? And he's like, yeah. Because I thought he had just found like a bootleg or something. I was like, don't be tweeting us. I don't think that song is out yet. And he was like, no, it's out. It's on iTunes. And I was like, damn, they put it out fast. Like, I get a lot of emails and be like, this, uh, this, this is uh, this a rush. They're trying to get this out ASAP, this and that. And I was like, all right. Yeah, well, I have no idea, so you know, I try to do it as fast as I can. Okay, so I mean, there's the Cardi B record for, for Big and Head. Yeah. But then there is also uh, G-Eazy and ASAP Ferg. Uh, they sampled uh, Slav on my yeah, dog. Yeah, Slav on my dog. And uh, did Drake and Black Boy JB yeah. sampled uh, the Project, Project Pat, Pat yeah. uh, out there yeah. for, uh, for Look Alive? Yeah. You produced that? Dra- no, I didn't produce that. I wish like hell I produced that. <laughs> uh, was that one of Juicy's uh, productions? Huh? Was that Juicy? No. Oh, someone else. Yeah, somebody else okay. made the beat. I don't know who made the beat, but... Uh, Too bad. Drake, Drake uh, he used some lines from it. But Drake always, he kind of he kind of always throws a little alley-oop, you know, a little... little love. Jay, Jay, uh, Drake was who told uh, G Herbo to make a full song out of that Who Run It. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, Drake is who kind of set that whole thing on fire. <laughs> what are some of the other like big, big samples out there from you guys? Oh man, there's a lot of them. Uh, that J Cole, 
that uh, one time from an L.A. sister. Oh, okay. Uh, don't save her. Uh, she don't want to be saved. saved. Yeah, Project okay. Pat. That was a project Pat, man, Pat wrote that. But uh, I wrote the hook. But, um, man, there's a bunch of them out there, man. Uh, tons, tons, and tons. Ty Dolla Sign got one. Man, so many people got them. Yeah, well, I remember tons. I interviewed uh, I interviewed Sir Mix-a-Lot. How much money has gotten, has Baby Got Back got made in the time that it's been out? Tens of millions? Uh, Baby Got Back has made a lot of money, bro. I mean, because I believe, um, first of all, why own your publishing if you're not willing to leverage it? Some people own publishing and just sit around and say no to every single opportunity. But the reason you own publishing is because as you get on in your career, you can still monetize those tracks, number one. And number two, you can continue to record music with integrity. So in other words, I can get in the studio and I'm doing a new record now and I could give a shit less who buys it because I make money on my publishing. So I put the record out, I have fun. My fans that are hardcore wanna hear it, they can have it. And I do videos like that. I do video. I did a video called Cars. Didn't even try to sell the record. I just did the video because I always wanted to do it. So that's the luxury you get from owning your publishing and more importantly, using it properly. Um, so yeah, Baby Got Back, I mean, tens of millions I think would be low. So Baby Got Back has made over 100 million, you feel? Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's definitely made over 100 million dollars. I can tell you that. I mean. I just look at my lifestyle and where it's been since 1992, and it hasn't fallen off. Hell, I saw that in a Burger King commercial or something, I think. Yeah, he said that he has maintained his lifestyle from the height of that song to now just fine. Uh, we did the interview at his house, and his house is ridiculous. I heard, <laughs> I heard he do real estate too. Did you hear that? I heard something about that, yeah. Yeah, I heard well, something. He, you're talking about $100 million. I mean, you know, off one song. That doesn't even count his platinum and gold albums. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, Mr. was hard, too, man. Memphis fucked with him tough, tough. So, do you ever turn down sample opportunities because you just don't nah. feel... No. No. Nah. <laughs> right, because he told me he had, like... Sometimes they had these weird commercials like Baby Got Cats or something like that. that yeah. He was like, okay, this is just silly. I'm not going. I'm not. <laughs> I'm turning this one down. Shit, I ain't turning it down. You ain't I'm going to tell, tell you the reason why I wouldn't turn it down. Because um, it's not for me to say what sound good or what not. You know, um, like a lot of stuff that you think is like the worst song in the world will be a huge hit. And another reason why I wouldn't do it is because, uh, you know, these kids have dreams. You know, they have dreams, so like they like they might be, you know, it'll, it'll really crush you if you try to clear a sample and somebody don't let you do it, you know, because they might be like, you know, I really love this song and I got everything invested into this. And, um, you know, a lot of these fuckers, they don't clear it. Yeah, so I, I heard, if, I heard if a lot somebody of... somebody got enough respect to call me and they really want to clear it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clear it for them. I don't give a hell what it sounds like. Yeah, I, think, I think J. Cole on his, his last album, the album before, was talking about how... You know, he's like, yeah, you know, we, we there's some more songs we couldn't get cleared, you know, like, you know, I don't understand why people don't clear this shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you clear everything. Yeah, I do. You never had something, let's just say it was a song by a racist group or or something like that. Do you, do you listen to everything before you clear it or do you yeah, just... Yeah, yeah, I have to. You, you got to. Because you don't never, they ain't gonna, they probably, sometimes they won't probably tell you where everything that they got involved in there. You know, they might be like, well, I'm sound, I'm gonna clear this. But then you hear like a little yeah ho in there too. And be like, well, you, didn't, you didn't tell me about that part. Like, <laughs> I want a piece of that too. <laughs> yeah, but you know whatever. So yeah, I listen to him. I listen to him, and uh, so far everything's been been uh, okay. been cool. So you've never you never heard know? anything that's like, nah, I'm not cool. No, nah. I, I can't be associated with this. No, nah. like yet. I said, I, I would clear it anyway, man. You never know. You never know what's gonna be a hit. There's a lot of songs out there we thought weren't gonna be hits. As big as a motherfucker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I feel you. Uh, I feel you. And you know, G Juicy J did a freestyle as well mm -hmm. over the Who Run It. Yeah. <laughs> hey, bump. Yeah. Hey, bump. Are you are you guys still in close contact? Yeah, we're still cool. We're still cool. Okay. We're but you guys aren't, we aren't doing any music together. Yeah, I don't know when we'll do music again together. I don't know. Yeah, you know, whenever. You know, the world waiting on it. But, you know, I don't know when we will. But, uh, yeah, we still talk because we still got all the business together. Yeah. Yeah, so we have to talk. Right. Because do both of you have to clear it if it's co-produced? Yeah, both of us clear them. 